Hello, welcome to lecture 2 of module 4. This is lecture number 12 of the course. In this lecture, we will continue discussing applications of quantum entanglement. In the last lecture, we discussed superdense coding. In this lecture, we will discuss quantum teleportation. Let us begin. Quantum teleportation is one of the most fascinating topic and draws interest even from general public. Technically speaking, quantum teleportation is a protocol or scheme to transmit an unknown quantum state of a qubit using two classical bits such that receiver reproduces exactly the same state as the original qubit state. Here, you need to note that qubit itself is not transported. This is very important. Qubit itself is not transported is not transported rather the information required rather the information required to reproduce the to reproduce the quantum state is to reproduce the quantum state is transmitted this is very important and in fact because of this uh, original state is actually destroyed such that quantum teleportation is not in conflict with no cloning theorem so teleportation protocol teleportation protocol is not in conflict or against the so called no cloning theorem because as per the no cloning theorem you know that a quantum state cannot be copied or cloned a, an arbitrary quantum state or unknown quantum state cannot be copied or cloned as you saw in the previous class on superdense coding two classical bits are transmitted from alice to bob using a quantum channel here alice is the encoder and bob is the decoder the critical component of the protocol was to use a shared entangled state between alice and bob and the entangled state is preferably a bell state and we have used the bell state phi plus to illustrate this super dense coding uh, protocol in the previous class quantum teleportation protocol is also similar in nature however here a quantum state is reproduced at bob's place after receiving information from alice so in this protocol say alice uh, want to transfer a quantum state to bob and what alice does as per the teleportation protocol he basically transfers some information to Bob uh, through a classical channel through a classical channel Alice transfers the information about the qubit he she wants to send to Bob through a classical channel and Bob after receiving the uh, information uh, do some operation on his qubit and then reproduces the quantum state in his lab and just like in superdense coding here also critical thing is that both alice and bob has to share an entangled state and preferably a bell state such as say phi plus okay uh, let me now discuss this teleportation protocol in some detail say alice has a quantum state or a qubit whose state she does not know and she wants to transfer this quantum state or qubit state to bob and he she does that by using a classical channel let me for illustration purpose let us say alice has this particular state say k psi is equal to a k0 plus b 
gate 1. This state belongs to say Alice initially and Alice want to send information about it to Bob so that uh, Bob can reproduce this state uh, in his lab. And Alice and Bob share the entangled state phi plus at the beginning. So Alice and Bob share this entangled state phi plus and you know phi plus this bell state is 1 by root 2 k 0 0 plus k to 1 1. Now Alice applies just like superdense coding some decoding states I mean some unitary operations in her qubits. Now as you can see Alice contains two qubit one is uh, this particular qubit and the another one is the qubit from this uh, shared entangled pair. As you see this shared entangled pair, this bell state, the first qubit belongs to Alice, the second qubit belongs to Bob, first qubit belongs to Alice and second qubit belongs to Bob. So effectively Alice contains uh, two qubits uh, in her lab and Bob has only one qubit in his lab, right? So Alice and Bob together start with the uh, state kth psi tensor product kth phi plus. So if I write it, so kth psi is A0 plus B1 and phi plus is 1 by root 2 k 0 0 plus k to 1 1 so if i open it up so you will get 1 by root 2 a 0 0 0 plus a 0 1 1 plus b 1 0 0 plus b 1 1 1 right now this first two qubits belongs to Alice, this third one belongs to Bob, here these two qubits belongs to Alice, this third one belongs to, uh, belongs to Bob, and here uh, the first two qubit belongs to Alice, the third one belongs to Bob, and finally here the first two belongs to Alice, and the third belongs to Bob. Okay, Alice uh, first apply now Alice has two qubits uh, in her lab. Now as per the protocol, Alice first, Alice first apply C0 operation, C0 operation and you know that this is a two qubit operation on her two qubits, on her two qubits while Bob's qubit remain unaffected while Bob's qubit remain unaffected remain unaffected because Alice can't do any measurement on Bob's qubit necessarily so the this operation mathematically speaking I will write it like this uc0 is the operation made by Alice on her two qubits and identity refers to the fact that no operation is done on Bob's uh, qubit. So we have started with this particular state initially and now let us see what would be the result of this operation, uh, this C0 operation. Let me just write it again. U C0 tensor product I, this is the operation and this already we have written the full form of it is 1 by root 2 we have already written let me write it again a 0 0 0 plus a 0 1 1 plus b 1 0 0 plus b 1 1 1 right this is what we'll have now you see uh, just to you know the uh, what happens because of the uh, c naught operation and we have already discussed C naught operation in great detail. So let us uh, let me write down the result of this C naught operation on the first two qubits of Alice. So because of the C naught operation, the first term would become a 0 0 0, and here 
just to remind you this is going to be my control uh, qubit and this is going to be my target qubit here this is going to be the control qubit and this is going to be the target qubit this is going to be the control this is going to be the target this is going to be the control this is going to be the target and we know as per the c naught operation the target qubit gets flipped only if the control gate is one right so using that we will have these terms so second term would be a 0 1 1 and third b would be this would become 1 1 0 and last term would become 1 0 1 so this would be the result of c naught operation now next next step what alice is going to do alice applies alice applies hadamard operation hadamard operation operation on the first qubit on the first qubit of the resultant state i mean by resultant state mean the state that uh, alice obtained after the c naught operation is done and here now second qubit and the third qubit would remain unaffected so mathematically speaking what uh, alice is doing see he she is basically making a hadamard operation on the first qubit and the second and the third qubit remaining unaffected and he is doing this operation on the state who is is obtained here because of the c naught operation so let me write it again so you will have a 0 0 0 plus a 0 1 1 plus b 1 1 0 plus b 1 0 1 okay this is what it will have just now recall we'll require that the hadamard operation is a single qubit operation and if the hadamard uh, gate is applied on qubit single qubit gate 0 we will get 1 by root 2 uh, gate 0 plus gate 1 and if hadamard operation is done on the qubit 1 then we will get 1 by root 2 gate 0 minus gate 1 okay so elise hadamard operation let me write once again elise hadamard operation on the first qubit uh, let me write it once again here so that I can write the full thing. So he, the operation is done on this particular state A00, A011 plus B110 plus B101. Now if Alice does the Hadamard operation on the first qubit, this will give me 1 by root 2 will be there. So uh, that will become this a half i can take common and then here the first one this one because of the operation of the hadamard it would become a uh, let me write here it would be k0 plus k1 then you will have 0 0 right then the second term let us look at it look at it then it will also become a k0 plus k1 uh, 1 1 and then the third term let me look it look at here then b you will get uh, k0 minus k1 uh, 1 0 right and finally finally you will get b if you apply hadamard operation here you will get uh, k0 minus k1 uh, 0 1 so this is what would be the result of this hadamard gate operation on the first qubit and if i uh, open it up and then i can write a compact uh, relation here if i collect all uh, the quantities associated with a i will have a 0 0 0 plus 1 0 0 plus 0 1 1 plus 1 1 1 and then i'll have b uh, 0 1 0 minus 1 1 0 plus 0 0 1 minus 1 0 1 i think you can easily verify it this is what we'll get in fact i can write it further in this form one half i can write 0 0 k 0 0 
a k 0 plus b k 1 then i have plus 0 1 uh, a k 1 plus b k 0 and k 1 0 a k 0 minus b k 1 and plus k 1 1 a k 1 minus b k 0 okay this is what we get so what you actually see is this if alice measures her two qubits in hand after this two operation that that is first uh, c naught operations followed by hadamard operation she will obtain one of the state k00 k01 k10 or k11 uh, with equal probability that is the probability would be 1 by 4 right uh, probability of getting k00 k01 k10 k11 now as you see after I write it in this form, this means that K00 now belongs to Ellis, K01 belongs to Ellis, while this belongs to Bob, right? This belongs to Ellis, this belongs to Bob, this belongs to Ellis, this belongs to belong to Bob, this belongs to Ellis, this belongs to Bob, and this belongs to Ellis, and this qubit belongs to Bob because of this operation made by Ellis, and this is very important so interestingly what is happening is that bob's qubit which was a qubit from bell state initially collapses to you know let me just write here bob's qubit getting collapsed to a0 plus b1 if alice measures her qubit as 0 0 and bob's qubit I'm just uh, writing all these things from here, just uh, summarizing in a tabular form. And if, uh, you know, Alice measures her qubit to be, say, 0, 1, then Bob's qubit collapses to A, K1 plus B, K0. If Alice measures her qubit to be 1 0 bob's qubit become a k 0 minus b k 1 and if alice measures her qubit to be 1 1 then bob's uh, qubit becomes a k 1 minus b k 0 right so you uh, you might be noting that uh, must be noticing this that alice has totally destroyed the initial qubit state k psi upon her measurement this makes quantum teleportation consistent with the no cloning theorem now what ellis does after doing these two operation ellis informs bob about her measurement result through a through classical communication and based on the information received from ellis bob now carry out certain unitary operation on his qubit let me now write little bit clearly what bob does in his lab after receiving the information from Alice, so received, let me show it in a tabular form, received information, information from Alice. As per the protocol, based on this information, Bob is going to do something. Suppose Alice informed Bob that she got uh, 0, 0. Uh, as a result of this uh, experiment as our experiment then bob state bob state bob has no idea what is it bob state is uh, a0 plus b1 and in this case the unitary operation if bob say get the information 00, zero from Alice, then the unitary operation bob does is the identity operation that means bob is going to do nothing on his qubit so therefore state after the unitary operation state after unitary operation would be simply a k0 plus b k1 and as you can see this is the original uh, quantum qubit state which uh, Alice intended to send to bob now now say bob get the information that Alice got 0 1 then uh, the state in bob, bob state would be a1 
a k1 plus b k0 and bob is going to make the operation x let me again tell you that bob has no idea that this is the state uh, he is having but bob uh, know that he has a uh, qubit state and then he make the operation x which is the not operation because of this not operation he is going to get a0 plus b1 once again you see this is the intended state alice wanted to send to bob and now say uh, bob uh, get the information that alice got one zero then uh, corresponding bob state would be a k zero minus b k one and in this case bob is going to make the z operation and this will result in the state a k zero plus b k one which is the originally uh, uh, alice wanted to send to bob and then finally if the information received by bob about alice measurement is that alice got one one then the corresponding bob state is a k one minus b k zero and bob here makes the y get operation on uh, his qubit on his quantum state then as a result of this he will get a zero plus b uh, k one and this is the original uh, state uh, that Alice intended to send to Bob. So you immediately see and clearly see that Bob reconstruct the initial state uh, that uh, Alice wanted to send by applying unitary operation on his qubit based on the information received from Alice. This is what quantum teleportation protocol is. Now let me quickly show this uh, protocol in a schematic. So this is the original state that Kate Sai Alice wanted to send and as part of protocol uh, both Alice and Bob has to share a uh, quantum state and in this case we saw that the so called phi plus state has to be shared between Alice and Bob so phi plus state this bell state can be created by using a Hadamard gate operation uh, with the input as 0, 0 followed by a C naught operation. This will result in the this will result in the state phi plus right and then Alice is uh, based on this uh, Alice after uh, this state is shared between Alice and Bob Alice is going to make uh, on his Q on her qubit uh, C is going to make the C naught operation followed by a, a Hadamard operation, right? This already we discussed. And then he C makes the measurement on her qubits. This is the measurement. Uh, I'm just showing. This is the measurement on her two qubits that Alice is having. And this information is passed to through a classical channel, through a classical channel this is this is the classical channel classical channel this information is passed to bob and then what bob does so finally bob makes unitary operation on his qubit based on the information received uh, from ellis and then he reconstruct the original state gate psi and this is the so-called quantum teleportation protocol is. So I hope uh, you have understood it. Quantum teleportation is not just a theoretical proposal. It has been realized in many different setups, realized under various laboratory conditions. One of the first reported results were from Baumister and Anton Zellinger group, where they have demonstrated quantum teleportation of a photon uh, polarization state of a photon i have picked up two figures from their paper in figure a te the teleportation protocol is schematically explained ellis and bob are sharing uh, entanglement pair of photons between them and ellis using classical channel informs bob about her joint measurement results and thereby bob reconstruct the quantum state and who is Ellis wanted to send to Bob. In figure B, the actual experimental scheme used by the research group is shown. 
Now here what they have done is just passing a ultraviolet pulse through a nonlinear crystal they created entangled pair of photons say 2 and 3 where the photon number 2 belongs to Ellis and photon 3 uh, belongs to Bob and they have created using this nonlinear crystal another photon 1 which is to be teleported and this photon number 1 is in the state uh, it is basically in either it is in a horizontal polarization state or it is in the vertical polarization state the, this is i am talking about the photon 1 which is to be teleported now after elise uh, makes some measurement called coincidence measurement using uh, a beam splitter and detector uh, two detectors were there to make the measurement the result of the measurement is informed to bob using classical channel and then bob reconstruct uh, the quantum state in his lab quantum teleportation has been uh, realized over atomic distances using nuclear magnetic re resonance as reported by nielsen group uh, then it has been reported with uh, atoms as well as atomic qubits and so on all these results were reported only for very short distances however in 2016 a research work is reported where quantum teleportation across a metropolitan fiber network was achieved and they reported quantum teleportation over a distance of 6.2 kilometers and actually such demonstration, demonstrations are huge boost towards realizing quantum communication networks and so-called quantum internet. Superdense coding and quantum teleportation are not the only applications of quantum entanglement. Quantum entanglement could be used to realize precision sensor devices as well. Precision sensing is one of the important application of quantum entanglement. Here I will give you a brief idea about the precision sensing only. To illustrate that let me give you an example. Consider a spin system. Say we have a spin system is given to you and this spin may be in the up state or maybe in the down state so it is in a superposition state like this uh, now as you know a spin system is very sensitive to uh, presence of magnetic field and we want to measure the ambient tiny magnetic field uh, that may be present around it now what you can do is that you can leave the spin in the magnetic field for some time. If you leave the spin in the magnetic field for some time then it will evolve and in fact uh, the spin will precess around the magnetic field and as a result there will be uh, there will arise a phase difference between the up, up state and the down, uh, down spin state. So after some time if we leave the spin in the magnetic field after some time there will be a phase difference between the up state and the down state suppose this phase difference between up and down state is say phi and this phase this phase phi is very sensitive to magnetic field in fact uh, phi is dependent phi is dependent on the strength of the magnetic field on the strength of the magnetic field so you can calculate the magnetic field because phase is directly dependent on or directly proportional to the magnetic field so if you measure the phase shift this is phase shift if you measure the phase shift then you can measure the magnetic field now this phase is extremely sensitive and it's prone to fluctuation very easily however rather than uh, dealing with only one single uh, spin system if we take an ensemble of correlated or entangled spin system then the sensitivity uh, can be enhanced significantly say 
you take an ensemble of say four correlated spin system suppose you correlate or entangle spin system you take then the this set of four uh, correlated spin system will result in this kind of a state because it is entangled and as you leave it in the magnetic field then there would be a development of phase between this uh, up state and the down state of the spin ensemble uh, spin state and what is remarkable is that the phase uh, shift that is going to be developed between the up and the down state would be four times that of the uh, phase shift that will occur for a single uh, spin system so therefore uh, because this phi is anyway a very small quantity and it's very sensitive to fluctuation if we just consider only one single spin uh, system or a set of or ensemble of uncorrelated set, set of spin system however if we take a entangled uh, spin system or correlated spin system this phase is going to be this phase shift phase shift is robust or robust compared to or what i mean to say is that it is less prone to robust or less prone to fluctuation fluctuation if an ensemble uh, of spin system in fact ensemble of entangled or entangled or correlated correlated spin system is used is used and also as i mentioned the phase shift is four times in the example that i have given four times that of a single spin system so obviously this phase shift phase shift enhanced phase shift is easy to measure and thereby will be able to calculate the magnetic field easily so this is one of the important application of quantum entanglement and one other application major application involving quantum entanglement is the so called quantum key distribution which is uh, used in quantum uh, cryptography however i will not talk about it here because there are many materials available in literatures already let me stop here in this lecture we have discussed quantum teleportation protocol and gave you a brief idea how quantum entanglement can be used for precision sensing i urge all of you to go through problem solving session number 4 whatever i discuss till problem solving session number 4 is going to be part of your examination if any more lecture is posted you can consider that as additional material only thank you so much Thank you.